Okay, so we're doing just a quick rock through on a Thursday evening. We're seeing some really cool builds here. This one in particular, it's called the Cunningham. Le Mans Corvette Series. It's limited, seven of 60. So they're gonna make 60 of these and that's it. That's so, it? Yep, yep. What's the uh, conversion costing, do you know? Uh, there, there's a few options. Antonio's the uh, guy behind the whole thing. Hey Antonio. Hello. Hello getting some good videos on this one. Yeah. This is a nice build. Yeah, she, she comes complete. So you, don't have, you don't bring the car to us, you just purchase the car. Love it. So you've got a C8 order and then you... No, you just come to us and order order, order a through new, you? new Cunningham. Got it. And um, and we would, we would complete the car for you. So we, we, we also secure the C8. So we have an allocation already for you it. You have an allocation already for yeah. it. Got it. Which is rated by Lincoln Falter, 600 horsepower, 580 for torque. Love it. And this, she's, a, she's a solid 2.6 second, 2 .6 second car. Is it a 2.6? Yeah, second car. Is that active arrow on the back? Or is yep. it just, it's, you can move it? Passive. It's passive. passive. You have, you have to uh, manually adjust. But it is rated for up to 1,200 pounds of downforce. 1,200, very nice. And then the scoops are ram airs directly for the engine. So I love the scoops, the snorkels you put on the side. Mm -hmm. And then the front pin is our new high camera mount. The camera mount is excellent. I was just pointing out to Cole, we call him the Cole vet. The Cole vet. He's, re he's restoring his own 1963. Oh, you have a 63 split window? No, uh, Actually, he's got, a, he's got the Burt, okay. but it's oh, a okay. Daytona blue and red oh, spec. Oh, very nice. So very it's nice. a one of 63 and 63 spec. Oh, beautiful. Um, and, um, all of these parts of the back of the car, yeah. these were designed by Peter Stevens that did the McLaren F1. Yeah, no Peter yeah. Stevens well. Yeah, this is this is all his work. And it's then, of course, you have the classic Cunningham racing stripes. It's the first thing I noticed was the Cunningham stripe, and I thought, is that a Cunningham? Yeah. So this is the first application of these in many years um, on the Cunningham vehicle. So, um, as you know, Cunningham created the racing track back in 19, 1951. Was it in the early 50s? Yeah, 1951. First car I had it was the Cunningham C2R at Le Mans in 1951. That is a great piece of history to have captured yeah. Yeah. on this video. That is excellent. Well, you know, the story behind it is, is that American racing colors are a white body with blue frame rails. That's right, a lot of the racing blue, like yeah. NART. But you, couldn't, but you couldn't see the frame rails in 1950. So Briggs had to figure out that the body now covered the frame. Right. So you had to figure out how do you show the colors. So you look at the 1950 Cunningham and Lamar cars with the two Cadillacs. They have white bodies, side bodies, with the blue down the middle. To show the frame. Trying, trying to figure the frame colors. So the next year, in 51, he took the left frame rail color and the right frame rail color and moved it to the middle of the car as two stripes. That's where that came from. That's American racing colors. And those are frame rail colors, right and left. Colors. That's how that came about. I'll never get a stripe again without it being frame rail colors. Colors. Ever. Yeah, Just because I learned that. Yeah. We're uh, we're Corvette enthusiasts. We've been long Corvette owners. I've had a 2000. Sold it when I got married. Then we sourced. We found for 10 years. We looked for the 63. Finally found one of them. This car does have a carbon wheel package. I was just going to ask. Yeah, I love the wheels that are on this now. Those are excellent. And compared to any of the rims that you'll see on a on a C8, these look amazing. For some reason, I just love how they're not cut out yet. They still yeah, have the solid forged aluminum wheels. They kind of harken back to the original steel rim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, actually, to the magnesium. That's, yeah. It was a, it's these are modeled on the on the magnesium Halibran kidney bean wheels that we used on the race cars in 19 between 1950 and 19. Did you say Halibran? Halibran. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had heard kidney, that a while. The kidney beans. The kidney beans, right? Yeah, the kidney bean wheels. Boy, that's, this that's where that style came from. So and the this, design language here is just and amazing. That's the carbon purple wheel. Here we go. Take it quick. There we go. Yeah, it looks just like it. So what's the difference in weight then? Uh, these over stock, they're eight pounds uh, per side lighter than the stock wheels. And then the brakes are three pounds per side lighter. So in the rear, it's 11 pounds off the car at each side of the car. It's a 22 pounds reduction in, in rotational mass. And so, and on the front, you get about eight pounds a side combination between brakes and wheel. Yeah, 
but the rear of the carbon wheel is only 23.6 pounds and the front is 19.6 pounds. Essentially you could, you could curl them. Curl. So the overall weight redux in this build versus about 100 pounds, 100, 100, 120 pounds. Most Amazing. of it is the exhaust. The exhaust knocks about uh, 60 pounds off the car because um, the, the stock exhaust is extremely heavy. And then the deck lid, the carbon fiber deck lid removes about another 20 pounds because this deck lid is carbon fiber. Painted carbon? No, no, no. It's painted on the outside, yes. Can you see the weave underneath it? Yes. Thanks for opening that up. Yep, there it is. It's all exposed carbon on the inner surface. And then... Very nice. Yeah, we, we create this because our... Normally there's a there's a recessment right here yep. on the cars, but ours is filled in because our reinforcements for the wing are there. So we created this trim piece. To it makes just perfect sense. Fill that in. I love it. And you can, folks, you can still get a golf bag in there. Yes. Look at that. And carbon, and also new new carpeting all the way through with the carbon Cunningham logoing as well. I love the branding. Mm -hmm. And that's in every every area. So the front trunk has one as well, and both foot wells. Let's see if we got there. We go. There it is again. And then the, who signed this? Uh, that's my signature, and then Ling, uh, Ken Lingenfelter. And Lingenfelter. So let's make sure who we, we're clear who we're dealing with here. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Antonio Pierce with Cunningham Automotive. Hey, Antonio Pierce. Yes. It's a pleasure to meet you. Same. Can't believe we got to talk to Antonio Modified Pierce. to the interior? Um, just on this car, because it's GT2 seats, it has, um, we reupholstered the headrests in twilight blue so that it matches the, the comp seats. Excellent. And then you have the anniversary emblem on the headrest, on the side glass, and also on the door sill. And anywhere you see carbon is real on the car, so you see it on the door sill. I'm glad you said that. We found a company in California that can print on actual carbon fiber for us. So the door sill sticker is actually carbon, as are the wheel caps on the, on the wheels. Those Even the wheel carbon. caps? Yeah, that's also carbon fiber. I love it, so cool. What's our favorite color? There it is. <laughs> there it is. And this is nice. It's like a gray. Yeah. It's blue. The closest thing I can come to, because this is our original color from 1960. You know, Briggs Cunningham was not only a famous race car driver, he was also a great sailor. And actually won the America's Cup in 1958. Love this and, detail. You know, I used to go deep sea fishing all the time when I lived back home in Massachusetts. And it hit me what that color is. When you're going from, from the shallow water to the deep water, and you get on, you start getting into the deep water. The water changes color, and it becomes this deep piece of information that not only is auto racing, it is nautical. Exactly. And then this is the optional front carbon fiber deck lid for the front, and also has a trim piece for that as well. <laughs> Way to go, Cunningham. Very nice. And the front splitter looks to be just yeah. It's carbon, exposed carbon, five uh, DM on that. Is it just a little bit longer? Than OEM? It's the 5VM, which is the, the advanced kit that they have. It is the 5. With, with the exposed, in the exposed carbon. So you didn't consider with the um, the side splitters making them further out? We looked at it, but, uh, Didn't really... but we have a, we have an under tray that we were developing for this. Yeah. That will actually add balance out with our wing. So this is actually working for us. So we basically, with our new under tray, you'll be able to balance out for the full 1,200 pounds of balance. Look at that wing. And it, it'll make it flat. The body will be under, the underbody will be flat from the front of the 5BM. So you have a full all, pan underneath. Oh, exactly. No kidding. So when it splits underneath then, it just follows underneath? Does yeah, it have no. any kind of knack ducts it, underneath it? It does have, have uh, veins to keep the air from channeling. And uh, just getting better control of the air going under the car allowed us to get additional downforce. Tell you what, McLaren should take notice of that new spoiler. Mm. Doesn't have to be tall, McLaren. <laughs> Doesn't have to be too tall. That one looks perfect. So. Well, I can credit Peter Stevens with that work. He's the one that did that all of that design. Thanks for the credit on that. Mm. When does this hit the track? Um, well, they're hitting the road. Uh, this is... Do you have uh, a track version then for Le Mans? Uh, not yet. Uh, we are working on a more advanced version that would be more track focused. Uh, this car is built to be tracked, but uh, right now they're just going to all individual owners. We don't have anyone that's going to race them. And they're all accounted for? Uh, we have 50 of the uh, 60 that we're planning to build sold. So we still have about 10 cars left. 
Are you willing to discuss MSRP on it, or is that something um, that's negotiated? Yeah, one, 169995. 169995. Very nice. As you, pretty much as you see it, with the only option on this car being the uh, front, uh, front part of the deck. That's an amazing option to only have. Well, this, <laughs> well that's, yeah, on this particular car. But you can get the carbon fiber wheels. You have the choice of the wheel colors. This is an optional wheel color, the ash. Yeah, I like the ash. It's not, so if it's, you know, completely blacked out. Yeah. Well, the reason why we chose this color is because on the original wheels, they were raw magnesium. So at the beginning of the race, of course, they looked like raw magnesium. But at the end of the race, the wheels towards heated up and with all that brake dust, magnesium was very porous. All the brake dust got into the wheels and it would just bake in. You couldn't get it out. Get it out. So by the end of the race, it looked like this. So we have a magnesium color and then we have an ash color. So you can have like a before and before after. Before and an after. after. Regardless, you're going to have after. Exactly. If you drive it the way we want to drive it. Exactly. <laughs> and then uh, we also have a champagne. If somebody wants a little brighter color. And then we have the silver satin, which is our standard. And so you are going with the silver. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think it would look great with the silver satin. It the nautical looks really theme. nice. Really it's nice. a little more roadworthy. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the option for the comp seats. Is another option for the car. Yeah. Cool. And so so you, these are the Cup Two seats. These are the these are the GT Two. The GT Twos. Mm -hmm. And then, why is that a better seat to pick for this car versus the comp seat? Comp seat. Yeah. It really is a personal preference. But if you're going to race track the car, I would do the comp seat. But if you're just looking for general comfort. The GT2 is a tremendous compliment. You still get the, the, the side bolsters for the back, but you don't have the, the high Yeah. All right, so this, so this is Wayne. This is the owner, and he's trying to tell me how well this car grips. Not Wayne Carini. No. <laughs> oh, that's the other Wayne. That's yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, this car just gives you that feeling of being planted. It's like, as, it's like it has claws that are just stuck into the asphalt. I've never driven a car that gives you that feeling, you know, the confidence, and uh, it, it is just stuck to the road. It's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. You yeah. would think that it has all-wheel drive at that point. And the, oh, yeah. And the sound. I mean, when you get on this, there's a couple of bridges near my house. So I come off the exit, you go, you know, big bridges. I go under one, second gear at 6,000 RPM, all right? The next bridge... I'm, I'm at 6,000 RPM in third gear, and this thing just screams. And uh, I, I, uh, I uh, got, got home to my wife. I says this car is just what did I say? Scary. Scary? Yeah, menacing. Menacing, menacing is a great way yeah, to say. Yeah, it gives you that menacing feel. I, I, I've got a Ferrari, and that fine-tuned, you know, the classic Ferrari sound. Yeah. This is rude, in-your-face menacing. Cold start, Cunningham. Absolutely. So what I just missed is Antonio pointed out, this is the number which build? This is the number three car. The number three car, we have red accents here. Mm -hmm. Everything else is identical. And if you look on the front, you'll see the red accents again. And that's because the original number three car had uh, red, red head like headlights. And the number two car had blue. So on our number two cars, these areas are blue. Okay. On our number three cars, it's red. Number one car, it's white. So again, this is going back to the mall. Mm -hmm. So this is the original number three car with the, with the one of our number threes next to it and with its original red and white covers. Well done, Antonio. That just, I mean, it brings it back exactly right. Mm -hmm. And that was the official race car too. That's right. Is this still in your possession? Huh? Is that still in your possession or in a no, collection? Um, actually, Lance Miller runs Carlisle Events, owned that car until about four, six months ago. I believe we saw it here last year at yes. the pavilion. Yeah, he still owned it at the time. And he just sold it off. 
and uh, this is his. This is Lance Miller's personal car. So this is the 03 of 60, the first number three car. Very nice, Lance. Well, I just can't get over the nautical um, theming on it. Mm -hmm. Thematically, the snorkel as well, a bit nautical itself. And this is the magnesium color. And you could definitely tell the difference on magnesium. Yeah. So eventually, they're going to turn the other color anyway. <laughs> well, these are this is a finish, so it'll stay their color. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. These are they're forged aluminum wheels that HRE produced for us. HRE? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, really great wheels, and they're super light actually. Yeah, we were, so when we had our 2000 C5, mm -hmm. we were in the midst, I was in the midst of trying to figure out to go HRE, because they really just popped out big at that point for that car. Mm -hmm. and they really looked good on all the builds. Ended up just going to a, um, we almost got the magnesium wheels on that car, but then ended up going to the Zeozik style wheels. Um, but wish I had the funds at the time to get HRE. Mm. So yeah. that's not the HRE. Their wheels aren't cheap, but their the quality is amazing. Yeah, I think they're definitely premier. Yeah. And certainly wanted them at that point, and here we are, how many years later? Mm -hmm. And Cunningham has certainly sourced them as a part. Yeah, they, they make all of our wheels. Nice so partner. We, we've got four different wheels to offer. Would you happen to know what wheels you had back in the racing days then? No, they were, they were uh, Hellebrand magnesium. You said that Hellebrand yeah. back then. Yeah. Okay. And this is, this is reproductions of that look. So something I'm learning is that magnesium was a thing back then. Because it was lightweight. Makes sense. So all the, all the race cars had magnesium wheels. Yes. All the times I've been around Corvettes with magnesium wheels, I finally learned. Well, that's where the, the term mag came from. Somebody said, get mag wheels. Mag wheels. They were magnesium. So I only know that. But that term was really representative of having a magnesium wheel. It just got, it became like Kleenex. And people were talking to get, if you had a big wheel on your car, say it mag wheels, but it's really, really referencing. You make a good point. It's part yeah. of my lexicon. Yeah. Exactly. It's definitely part of your lexicon. Exactly. But it was really meant to, originally it was describing mag, actual magnesium. So we got to see the number three car as well. It's almost identical without, I really do like these red. I think if I were to source a car, I'd get the red in the front as well, because it does give that racing uh, heritage. And uh, the Cunningham heritage is prime and true on these builds. And I got to talk to Antonio, the CEO of this whole thing. Thank you, Antonio. You're